Hi, Caleb. This is Narda. I'm sorry to hear that Josh is sick. I know he wasn't feeling well when he was here and I met him the other day. I hope he's feeling better. Um, a couple of things. I don't want you to angst too much about this worksheet. What I assigned it for was to kind of get a sense for how well you're able to apply the things you've learned from ThinkWell thus far. I know ThinkWell doesn't always give you lots of time to practice, and practice is really important. Um, so I will go over this worksheet, answer your questions, but more than anything, I wanted to use it as an opportunity for me to see um, how I can support you in your learning throughout the rest of this course, which means move on in your schedule and do the other work that's assigned, and we'll go from there. Um, when you send me papers and I grade them, it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to use it for, toward your final grade. What it means is I'm trying to assess where you are. Um, I will go through this worksheet and I will show you a place on my website where you can get some more information about doing stoichiometry. Okay, so I have written the problem at the very top of this page, which is the balanced reaction between lead acetate and potassium iodide. There is a two in front of both the potassium iodide and the potassium acetate, and that balances the two ions of acetate that are combined with lead on the reactant side and the two ions of iodine that react with lead on the product side. And the, the question was, number two said, or number three, if you produce 17.4 grams of lead iodide, if that's what you produce, how many moles of potassium iodide were used? And they want the number of moles. To solve this problem, I use this approach. I write what I have been given, which was 17.4 grams of lead iodide, and I put it over one. And then for any stoichiometry problem, I then use conversion factors to convert the unit I have here, which is grams lead iodide, to the wanted unit, which is number of moles of potassium iodide. And in, you can go backwards and forwards in an equation using the same process to determine the relationships between any of the compounds involved. So the first thing I need to do is convert my grams lead iodide to moles lead iodide. And I use that using the grams per mole unit for lead iodide or the molar mass. And one mole of lead iodide has 461 grams. And I know that you have covered how to calculate the molar mass. That might be a value you need to check um, in the problem as you did it. You are just slightly off in your answer, and I'm not sure where it is, so I'm going to show you how I come to an answer, and you can compare what you've done and figure it out. So my grams lead iodide are both going to cancel. I have grams lead iodide in the numerator and in the denominator. The unit, if I were to solve the problem right now, the unit would be in moles lead iodide. I want moles potassium iodide, so I'm going to use a conversion factor that shows the relationship between the number of moles used in the equation, and that would be the understood one in front of lead iodide. So one mole of lead iodide is produced when we react two moles of potassium iodide. Again, I make the choice as to what to put in the numerator and the denominator based upon the unit I want to cancel. I want to cancel moles lead iodide. It is in the numerator. So I put moles lead iodide in the denominator. Looking at my problem now, I can see the only unit I have left in this problem is moles potassium iodide. I want moles potassium iodide. So I win. All I have to do now is solve the problem. And when I do, multiplying top times top times top divided by parentheses bottom times bottom and parentheses and I, I say that in parentheses because 
when you're using a calculator, you have to remember to put in the parentheses if you use more than one value in your denominator. And, and the result is 0 0.075 moles of potassium iodide. Your answer is slightly different. So go over the numbers that you used, see if you can compare the process you used with mine and determine where you may have made an error. Now to the question you really asked, which is if you started, if you really started in your lab with one mole of potassium iodide, what was the percent yield for the experiment? Percent yield means a comparison of the lab experiment result with the mathematically derived result. What did you get compared to what should you have gotten or derived? Because you can understand that in a lab, your results aren't always what you would calculate mathematically. Something splattered, something spilled, your measuring isn't as accurate as it should be, your measuring tools are not as accurate as they should be. Lots of things get in the way. So this is how we can do that. Um, it's asking, if you really started with one mole, what we calculated here was to produce 17.4 grams, we started with 0.075 moles. Well, in the lab, the instructor gave you a full mole. What should you have gotten? There are a couple ways you can do this. One is to go through, and I'm going to change colors here. One is to go through this whole process for one mole and what you could do is you could put your one mole of potassium iodide over one and then do your calculations to get to how many moles of lead iodide you would produce. Or you could look at this and recognize that if I were given one mole of potassium iodide, That would be my mathematical value. That would be um, my starting place. And it looks like my result ended up with the, that I only reacted 0.07 mole, 0.075 moles of lead iodide. This would be my part out of the whole. And I do that division and multiply it times 100 to get percent. And my answer would be 7.5 percent. Um, percent yield is covered on ThinkWell on section, let's see, 3.3.5. Okay, if you want to look that up again. Percent is always part out of the whole times 100, no matter what you're doing, if you're calculating what percent off in the grocery store. Um, and what you have to determine in this case, what was my part, and that would be what I actually produced, what was my whole, which would be what I was given by the lab TA. And then you can see that what you um, ended up with was only 7.5% of what you should have ended up with, which isn't really great. Who knows what happened in that lab? Maybe the cat ran through and knocked things over. I don't know. Um, and it doesn't matter. You figured it out mathematically. It is what it is. And so that would be the correct answer. Now, for number five on that worksheet, don't do it because you don't know um, the answers to that just yet. Finally, I would like to draw your attention to my website. And the website, I've given it to you in homework, is www.dreamspinnerlearning.com slash chemistry underscore homepage dot html. And on week 15 of this year, I posted a video. And the video explains how to do stoichiometry using a couple of different, I think it, I may have shown how to do two different ways to do stoichiometric problems. I mean, it's just a way for you to approach these problems that may help you. So take a look at that. Continue with your schedule. 
and tell Josh to get better soon. Thanks. Bye.